Um, hi guys, welcome to the module, Wittgenstein, Meaning and Forms of Life. Uh, my name is Ollie, and I'm going to be your lecturer and instructor for the, uh, the duration of the module for the whole semester, so nice to meet you all. It'll be good to meet you all uh, as we proceed with the module. Um, so this is the very first video in um, a sort of selection of pre-recorded material that you'll be expected to watch before our uh, our sessions, uh, in-person sessions. Um, so the format of these things is going to be like so. I think what I'll be doing is uploading probably between two and three of these videos a week and they won't be an hour long, they'll be more like 10 or 15 minutes long or maybe 20 minutes long. Um, partly because it's a bit tedious just to watch someone speak for an hour um, and also because it's a bit tedious to speak to a camera for an hour straight so they'll be, they'll be split up into uh, two or three videos at a time. Um, so welcome to the module like I say. This week is the very first week so it's fairly introductory and in this first video, what I want to just do is to introduce you to Wittgenstein himself, Ludwig Wittgenstein, uh, the person. Uh, I want to just talk about his life a little bit, um, some of the major events of his life, briefly. This is kind of going to be a brief overview, but as I go through some of the major events of his life, I want to pick up on philosophical events of his life, bits of... Uh, changing in his philosophical thinking uh, and as I do that I will therefore be describing the course because we're going to go through chronologically from the very earliest of Wittgenstein's philosophical remarks to the very last. Um, so Wittgenstein was quite an interesting character, had a very very interesting life, there was even a film made of his life <laughs> Um, and there's plenty of biographies out there, one by Brian McGuinness, which is very good, um, one by Ray Monk, which is very good, because his life was sufficiently interesting, I think, to attract biographers and uh, filmmakers. So he was born in 1889 to a very, very wealthy um, Austrian family in Vienna. A family of high society, the highest society that there is. Um, Gustav Klimt painted Wittgenstein's sister, for instance. They had famous composers around at the family sort of estate often. And he grew up in that kind of climate, kind of high society, Vienna in its uh, cultural heyday kind of, um, kind of era. Um, and he began in sort of 1908... 1909, you know, when he gets to about 18, 19, university period, he wants to study aeronautical engineering. He does that at the University of Manchester, which I've just left uh, to come and uh, work at Hertfordshire. Um, but as he is studying aeronautical engineering, gets interested in mathematics, uh, gets more and more interested in mathematics, and eventually he uh, goes to Cambridge in 1911 and starts studying the philosophy of mathematics with Bertrand Russell. And we'll get into all of that uh, in the next couple of videos. Um, then in sort of 1913, as he gets more and more interested in philosophical issues, he goes and lives in Norway on his own in a hut uh, in a fjord somewhere where he composed... Uh, some of the first philosophical remarks that we have. Uh, so that's your sort of first indication that he's kind of an interesting interesting guy. Uh, he often did this. He often just sort of up sticks and went and lived on his own for a while until he got his um, thoughts sorted. Um, after Norway, the First World War broke out. And he immediately signed up for the Austro-Hungarian army and went to work on the front um, and earned many, many medals for bravery. I think he was throwing himself at them. Um, and 
importantly for us, during the First World War is when he was working on all of the philosophical ideas that would become the Tractatus Logico-Philosophicus. So just after the First World War is when that book was uh, published. And that's the book that we're going to be looking at for the first sort of three or four weeks. Right? It was the only book of philosophy that was published in his lifetime, i.e. the only book that he thought he could give his okay to being published. Everything else was published posthumously. Um, and it was all, all of the Tractatus was sort of composed, thought about um, between 1913 and uh, roughly the end of the First World War. And he spent the last sort of nine months of the First World War in a prison of war camp in uh, Italy. So after he finished the Tractatus, and this is this is kind of interesting, and we'll get to it when we actually study it in depth in the next sort of coming weeks, he thought he solved all philosophical problems. That was the sort of great um, achievement of the book, to have put to bed all philosophical problems, you know, just not anything to worry about anymore. And so having done that, he then left philosophy which is consistent with his thinking that there's nothing left to do in philosophy. He left philosophy and uh, for almost a decade, for about nine years, and he went and became a school teacher in Austria. And uh, it's kind of a strange period of his life, I think. Um, he sort of hated it and loved it. Uh, there's, there's more we can go into there, but we, this is a brief overview. Uh, but the important thing is that he thought it was better to do that than to keep working at philosophy because he sold philosophy already. He was eventually sacked from that job because he hit a school child. Um, and you can read about this online if you want. But, so it was a bit scandalous. Um, yeah, not not great to say the least. And that kind of brought his teaching career to an end. Um and then he was brought back to Cambridge in 1929. So nine years after he left philosophy, and he starts to see problems with the Tractatus. Deep, deep problems. And this is where we pick up the thread after we look at the Tractatus. Um, we start to look at the year 1929 and what kind of problems Wittgenstein is seeing with his early thought. Uh, that will be the week titled The Colour Exclusion Problem in the Module Handbook. And then between sort of 1929 and 1949, he was composing what would be published posthumously as the Philosophical, philosophical Investigations, which when it was published posthumously became ridiculously influential, um, you know, one of the most important books of philosophy ever written uh, and that was all composed between sort of 1930 when he returned to philosophy and the end of the second world war um, and we will look at some of the main topics from the philosophical investigations we will look at things like um, his change in conception of what meaning is in the tractatus he had one conception of meaning in the philosophical investigations he changes his mind uh, we will look at that conception of meaning. Uh, we will look at his uh, thoughts on the impossibility of private language. That's another topic for the week. His thoughts on uh, this notion of following a rule. He thought it was a, there was a paradox involved in that notion. We'll look at all of these things. Lots and lots of very influential ideas came out of the philosophical investigations, and we'll be treating them in uh, separate weeks. Um, during the Second World War, he worked as a, a porter at uh, Guy's and St Thomas's Hospital, which is uh, not that far from where I live. From where I live, in fact, I got my wisdom tooth taken out there the other day, and there was a plaque. There's actually a plaque for Wittgenstein there at Guy's and St Thomas's Hospital in um, South London. So, in 1949, he um, effectively retires from academic life which he'd never really gotten on with. I don't think he really enjoyed academic 
life. I don't think he enjoyed the people that he worked with. He didn't get on with many of the other professors that he uh, he was mixing with. Uh, so he effectively retired, but he didn't give up philosophy. He stayed in various places. He went and lived in a hut in Ireland. He then stayed with friends in uh, Swansea in Wales. He visited America. And all this time he was getting quite ill from uh, cancer, but he was still doing good philosophy. And in fact, he started work on um, some new material, um, which has been posthumously published as On Certainty. Um, and that material took him about two years to write. And the very last remarks in Uncertainty um, are written about two days before he died. And it's very unedited. So it is just very sort of uh, philosophy in action. Fascinating, fascinating work. Um, and we will study Uncertainty. Um, I think we've got two weeks devoted to Uncertainty. And that will be... Um, I mean, it's it's uh, really fascinating and, and quite under-researched still because the philosophical investigations has been the, the sort of primary focus for researchers, but there's um, there's still lots of work being done on uncertainty. So that's, you know, that's a very brief overview. We're going to look at Wittgenstein's early notes in the First World War, the Tractatus, the publication of the Tractatus. We're going to look at this... Um, Strange return to philosophy in 1929 when he starts to see problems with the Tractatus. That'll take us through to the Philosophical Investigations, where we'll discuss many different topics from, the, from that work. Rule-following paradoxes, the impossibility of private language, its alternative conception of meaning. Then we'll look at uncertainty, and we'll take about two weeks over that. Uh, and the... the the last week that we look at uncertainty, we'll be looking at Wittgenstein's solution, dissolution of the problem of philosophical scepticism. So we'll sort of begin talking about the philosophy of logic. We'll move through uh, questions about what linguistic meaning is and what it isn't, according to Wittgenstein. And we'll end up applying all of those considerations about meaning to problems of philosophical scepticism, sort of classic philosophical problems, to which Wittgenstein has very non-classical solutions, very interesting solutions. Uh, and that will be that will be the the course as I intend to sort of to, to go through it with you guys. Um, and I don't want to sort of uh, go into much more detail about Wittgenstein's life, but I hope that's given you a sort of brief skeleton. Um, if you want to read more about his life, it is fascinating, and there are several biographies I can recommend to you. Um, with respect to the sort of the way the course is going to run, just a few words on that now. You'll have these pre-recorded um, video sort of mini lectures, and then we're going to have our two-hour sessions in person. So obviously, it's absolutely vital that you watch these and do the, the required reading for those sessions because I'm not going to be lecturing in the sessions. There's going to be a mixture of um, questions, me setting sort of questions for you all to work through with each other and as a group and potentially um, in in um, as a whole group and as sort of mini groups and pairs and things so there's going to be there's going to be questions on the text so the session will be devoted quite a bit to that and then we'll we'll throw it back to the whole group and to me and we'll discuss it and I can sort of clarify things for you another thing that we're going to be doing is probably reading through the text the primary text because that's helpful actually that's really helpful uh, if we read through that in person together slowly really sort of uh, take it apart and uh, any questions that you have raise them there and then so the so the two hour session is going to be quite sort of you focused you know i this is i'm not going to be lecturing um i'll probably recap what, what i say in these videos but for the most part it's going to be a dialogue um yeah so i think that's about that that for this uh this first mini lecture 
a brief overview of Wittgenstein's life and um, the sorts of philosophical events that took place there, what we're going to cover, and uh, the, the sort of rough structure of the, the in-person sessions. So, um, yeah, thanks for listening, and in the next video we'll get a bit more into the sort of the meat of um, some of this very early um, uh, philosophical material. Thanks.